Thank you, Tim, and um, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Um, I'll, I'll start with a disclaimer, um, which is uh, the first page. It's a little bit different um, to normal. We, you know, a lot, a lot of people pass by the disclaimer very quickly, but I think the disclaimer is important um, in respect to talking to what we do. Um, general advice disclaimers basically tell people, look, um, I'm not giving you any advice. I'm not taking into account any of your personal circumstances. Um, I'm just here to tell you what um, what we are. Have a think about it and go back and go away and make your own decisions. The Sequoia business is all about um, providing advice and taking into account people's personal situations. And we, we are looking to um, lead the industry in respect to advice in all capacities. Um, so I thought I'd just touch on that quickly, but you know, obviously today is about general advice and you know, I have not taken into account anybody's personal circumstances in this presentation. Um, so I'll just um, leave it that with that one and move on. To, today, you know, the purpose, you know, of the of the 10 minute presentation um, with, with the group today, from my perspective, is is basically just to introduce who Sequoia is. Um, you know, we, we fly under the radar a little bit in respect to being a small company. We appreciate um, groups like Share Cafe um, introducing us to yourselves. Um, and, and the purpose, if I can, if I can do what Warren Buffett talks about and, and explain our company to you, um, to the point where you, you know, you understand what we do and you can, uh, you can start to follow our progress. I think today would have been very worthwhile. So that 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 is my ambition to explain what we do, and get, and give you a feel of it, how we generate our income, and how we um, generate our profit, and and, and look forward to um, you know following our ride. Um, I also would like to talk about the last three years. In 2019, the board and myself um, came together and we talked about a, a long-term strategic plan. I often talk to um, our existing shareholders about we are the tortoise, we are not the hare. We are looking to provide you know, consistent growth over long periods of time to actually build a very large company. Um, we we recognise we're a small company at the moment with about a, a $90 million market cap. We do not want to be a small company with a $90 million market cap, but we don't expect to drill a hole and get a gold result and be a, a major company next year. And we have a three, five year, 10 year plan to continue to grow very steadily, increase our EBITDA, increase our net profit after tax, increase our dividends, increase our share price and slowly um, look to achieve our long term goal. Um, and I also would like to, you know, probably the last last part of, of the session, the last two parts of the session, is in, introduce the consolidated parts of our business. Um, we've got 20 different companies within the business with one core function. The core function is to provide the advice industry and the community um, financial advice in all capacities and try and help um, the advice community drive down the cost of advice and assist the community um, access advice. And, and that is what we're all about. I'll move to our next slide. Um, the, the financial results for, for 2021 were very good. Um, you, know, you know, every single indicator was a positive. Um, we, we have $116.5 million of revenue in, tw in the year 2021, which was 30% increase on the year 2020. So we, we, you know, whilst I talk about the tortoise, we are growing quickly um, and we expect to continue to grow revenues um, Regularly, um, a number of the the revenue growth this particular year was was from some acquisitions. Our organic growth contribution looking forward is fifteen percent um, in revenue, and we expect that to flow down um, at a greater rate in our EBITDA net profit after tax and so on as we get you know, greater scale, greater synergies um, from the business. EBITDA last year was eleven point five million dollars. Our EBITDA is very similar to cash. Um, so we're, we're basically generating $11.5 million of cash um, each and every year, or last year, um, and that reflects an EBITDA, net profit after tax, and taking away the depreciation was 7.2 million, and 5.5 million in respect to net profit after tax. What, what we are about is, you know, Warren Buffett talks about one of the, the wonders of the world is the compounding. Um, we are looking to generate around about $800,000 to $1 million per month in cash earnings. And we are looking to use that to compound our performance. Um, we are looking for acquisitions uh, in almost every case. 
Um, we're looking to use the cash we generate to make acquisitions. Um, we're looking to, to make acquisitions on PE multiples of four, five and six um, with cash. Um, where where a, um, a seller is looking to um, you know, be a long-term merger type opportunity, we will issue some shares. Um, but really, we're, we're looking to self-generate our cash, use the benefits of compounding and, and, and get that um, working for us to, to create returns. The company share price has done very well over the last 12 months, but still at the current share price, we're trading at 6.3 times EBITDA or around 10 times net profit after tax, um, which we believe is an undervalued company. Um, I'll look to the, the next slide, which talks about that a little bit more. Um, the, the financial results, if you look at the three-year plan, every single metric is positive. Um, but if you look at the um, point eight, the, the EBITDA multiple that we're now generating is, is very, very low compared to our peers. If you look at the financial services sector, um, you, you, the average EBITDA multiple is closer to 10. Um, and I think that's you know, a reasonable multiple when you consider the, you know, the cost of interest um, and, the, and the sort of yield you can get. Two years ago in 2019, when our share price, when, when we set this new initiative, our share price was 20 cents. Come 2021, our, our dividend was one cent. So two years out, we're looking at a 5% yield. We're not a dividend company though, I might point out. We are a growth company. We only, we're only looking to pay 20 to 25 to 30%, growing slowly um, as our dividend distribution. We are really looking to use the compounding effect of generating cash to buy businesses to continue to compound that return. And that, and that is what we're looking to do. So for every dollar, obviously we pay 30 cents in tax. We're looking to pay 25 cents in dividends, but use the 50 to 60%, 60 cents in the dollar that we're generating each and every month to go and buy another business. Um, as an example of that, just quickly, um, we bought a business yesterday for $2.5 million, all in cash. So basically that took us two and a half to three months to generate that $2.5 million of cash to be able to fund it. Um, and that's gonna generate an extra $500,000 per annum in operating earnings for us. So that is very compoundingly positive for us. And that is what we're looking to do. Um, the next slide, that, that, that's our share price performance. So you can see in 2019, when we reset our, our goals, we were around the 20 cent mark. We, we flatlined for a while as the market sort of digested that, that strategy. But as the numbers started to talk, the share prices started to gain. And as I said before, um, at the 70 cent price mark where we are now, um, we're trading at 6.3 times EBITDA or 10 times NPATA. Um, so, you know, in our opinion, we're not expensive. Um, and because of that, we're not looking to um, issue any shares um, for, for businesses that, that are looking to exit, but we, we may, may consider, you know, very, very strategic um, acquisitions in shares, but we're really using cash to, um, to make further acquisitions. At September, we had $18 million of cash. Um, we have no debt. Um, so we've got a good cash war chest to make acquisitions. Obviously that's gonna come down with using the two and a half million um, you know, for the general insurance business we acquired. But you know, when you're generating $800,000 to a million dollars cash, your cash balance is going up very quickly. And we will be looking to make further acquisitions across um, the various businesses we've got. And, and I might move on to that slide now, talking about you know, what it is we do. Uh, we have four wealth, you know, four divisions. So wealth is basically licensing financial advisors. Um, the, you know, the Royal Commission in 2019 came out and you know, the banks and, and the insurance companies and the fund managers basically dominated the sector um, in respect to the number of advisors that they had and that drove sales into their products. The Royal Commission identified that that was a conflict and suggested that the, uh, um, the distribution piece and the product piece needed to be separated, which was very good news for us. And it's what I've always believed. Um, and that has seen us able to grow the number of advisors that we have. We have 400 advisors that, are, that use our license in the wealth division. 
they are different types of advisors. So we have you know, the complete financial advisor who's a financial planner who comes out to your home or you might go and see them at their office and they take into account all of your circumstances and give you personal advice. We have stockbrokers who do a combination of that. We have a corporate finance business. We have a family office business that specialises in providing advice to families with more than $5 million to invest. And then we have a, a general advice only business. Um, the wealth division makes up about 50% of our revenue at the moment. Professional services is basically, and, and the other three divisions are basically then looking to complement what an advisor needs to provide um, better advice. And, and that's where the other three divisions sit. Um, so the professional services business basically does three things. It provides the accounting industry access to legal documents. So when you go and see your accountant, you set up a company, a trust or a super fund, they buy that company or set that company up on, on your behalf. They buy it through businesses like ours. So you know, Constitute, Doc Centre, NTAA Corporate, Panther Corp, are all document businesses. We are moving those businesses to a software as a service, but at the moment it's a commodity that allows us to engage with more than 1,000 accountants um, and also doing more than 100 documents per day. The Sequoia superannuation business basically does similar. It provides financial planners and accountants the ability to do their self-managed super fund administration on their behalf. Again, looking to reduce the cost of advice um, by using an outsource provider that can do it at a lower cost at a, in a more premium manner um, to allow the accountant or the advisor to actually do what they do best and that's give personal advice. Equity markets is um, basically direct to the market investments. So we're, we're an ASX clearer, um, similar to you know, some of the businesses that you see like you know, Pershing or FinClear, open markets, those type of businesses. We clear for 55 AFSLs which is a, you know, 55 other licensees, they, they buy and sell their shares um, and we do the back office clearing. So it's very much an administration business. And our direct business um, is a competitor to, in some ways to Share Cafe, uh, is the Finance News Network, Sequoia Asset Management and Sequoia Direct. Move to the next slide. Um, unlike Con, I'm going a bit too slow. Um, the divisional results, all the numbers heading in the right direction. Um, as I said, the only division that suffered a little bit was our direct division. That was because of COVID. We, we did a lot of um, seminars at venues. Obviously the venues are closed, so we couldn't do a lot as much as that as normal. Um, move to the next one. I think I've covered this, but again, you know, the wealth division basically is, is all about the advisors. The number of advisors in the market is reducing, but the number of advisors that we're getting is increasing. Um, the level of demand for advice is absolutely increasing. There is not enough advisors to serve the community needs and groups like us um, are well positioned to do that. Um, next one. Professional services, um, just in the, in the interest of time, um, the document business that we have charges $143 per document. Um, you know, has good 35, 40% margins, but we're turning that into a software as a service business. So when somebody sets up a company, we, we know that they're going to need a terminal to do their, um, you know, take the money from their clients and, and pay their bills. We also need that they know they will need general insurance, they'll need secretarial services, they'll need a whole host of services so that we're looking to um, add additional product to them. And, and the direct division being the final division. I'll move past that one. Um, is is all about media as well. So we own a business called Financial News Network, which is very similar to, to, to the Chef Cafe business where we, we um, provide content for the direct com community. Um, and that's a business that we're looking to invest in heavily over the next few years. Um, and probably finally, I might just put a little forecast out. Um, we're four months into the financial year. Um, for previous corresponding periods, $52 million revenue last half, first half, we expect that to go to 63 million. EBITDA, we're calling a 20% increase in EBITDA, um, increase for the prior corresponding period in the first half. Net profit before tax, 25% increase. So as our revenue grows, we're expecting our margins to accelerate. In financial services, the first half of the year is always um, 
you know, lower in revenue total than the second half because of um, you know, a lot of people pay their bills in, in June and, and get advice in June. So we, we always find that the second half is significantly higher. But first half, we're, we're definitely well ahead of the previous corresponding period and ahead of our budget. So I might finish up on that note. Um, hopefully I've explained a little bit about what we do um, and, and give you some colour for that. And hopefully you begin to put us on our watch list, on your watch list. Thanks, Gary. Um, I've got a couple of questions here. We don't have a lot of time, but um, Morrison's is your self-clearing um, business. And, and I think people should be aware that a lot of uh, brokers stop clearing themselves when the ASX put up that kind of working capital requirement. Now, some of your competitors like FinClear, which Magellan's an investor, and then, as you mentioned, Open Markets, they're kind of all planning to list. Is there any kind of insights that you can potentially see on your on your on the market valuations of these businesses and what that means for Morrison's? Yeah, well, Morrison's, you know, is one of our 20 businesses and, you know, our market cap is $90 million and we've got $18 million of cash. Um, open markets are looking, as you said, to list at $100 million. We're, we're as big as them. Um, we're more profitable than them. Um, we're growing as quickly as them. Um, so, you know, you know, an astute investor would have to suggest that the Morrison's business within Sequoia is, you know, is very variable. Um, just this year alone, our Morrison's business from 30th of June to September is up 35% again. Last year, the revenue was up 100%. Um, it's a business that's growing very quickly and we're winning market share all the time. Um, yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be an interesting up. business. It'll be interesting Absolutely. business to uh, look at post potential listings for ThinkClear and Open Markets. Um, and, and with the financial advice business, I mean, there, there are fewer advisors and there's more clients to service. Um, how can this area grow without kind of bringing in additional advisors? Well, it's going to be very difficult. I think, you know, you know FinTech and robo-advice and general advice is probably going to um, take the younger brigade. But, you know, there's, there's an, an enormous shift of wealth coming in the next few years as um, intergenerational wealth. And... People are going to need personal advisors. So it is a real issue for the industry. Um, groups like us with you know, large distribution forces are going to be inundated with client opportunity for those businesses, making them more profitable. Um, businesses like us and a number of the others have, have realised this and we're trying to drive down the cost for the advisor to operate. And we're hoping come 2024 that we actually start to see the numbers of advisors increase again. Um, because the, you know, the hard roads that these guys have done to, to cope with the increasing compliance costs and, and all the difficulties to run their business might start to get a little bit easier. And, and those that survive the challenges of, of the last two years and the next two years um, are going to have tremendous businesses and, and groups like us will be beneficiaries of that. And, and just finally, is there a kind of a target market for you? Obviously, you've got the, the younger generation with apps being quite active in the market at the moment, do you plan to attract them to be your clients? Um, a little bit, um, but more, more um, I think our market is, is people who are looking for personal advice and looking for investment opportunities that are a little bit different. Um, you know, the education that a financial planner and, and a broker and so on has to have, gives them a point of difference in, for their client base. Um, people who have some wealth are, are prepared to pay for that. Um, and, and I think that's our market. So I, I think it's the people with the money um, that, that is our market.